a short and weird one. Um, I uh, don't have a whole lot to say about this, and there's no way to tie it to really anything else. Uh, this is a bottle of uh, Tori's Classic Whiskey. Um, this is our first real whiskey review, so it's kind of... Uh, I don't know if it's weird or fitting to start here, but um, Centauri is, of course, probably the best-known um, uh, Japanese whiskey company out there, uh, largely because of uh, Bill Murray. Poor relaxing times. Make it Centauri time. Long story short, I bought this in a store and uh, thought that I had found something unique that I had never tried before. Um, and. I mentioned it a few days later to a bartender in Tokyo, and he said it, uh, that this was not a whiskey for drinking, it was a whiskey for getting drunk. So, uh, <laughs> pretty sure he means that it's made for, um, you know, cheap, easy cocktails, so at the end of this video, stick around and I will show you how to make one. For posterity, I sent some to Dan, uh, he has never tried it before. Yeah, you can see our uh, science experiments that are now how Dan and I uh, drink together. Properly aliquoted whiskey, right here. I guess we'll start with how it smells. All right. That's booze, all right. Yeah, that's that is booze. Uh, I get nail polish remover and a little bit of like caramel, um, so yeah. pretty sugary. This is definitely uh, pretty sugary. If I had to guess, this is not its original color. There's color added to this, and probably um, some uh, something to make it a little bit more palatable than the way it came out. Um, but for reference, this was less than probably 800 yen. So, uh, and I think it came with a little container um, to make a essentially pre-made mixed drink. So they really at least knew what they were trying to sell me, and I just didn't know how to read the fucking bottle. Um, so uh, I guess we'll go for our first taste. Cheers, bud. Cheers. Cut to, cut to, cut to, cut to. A lot less harsh than I was expecting it to be, honestly, based purely on the smell. Kind of tastes to me like like a mellow vodka almost. There's really not a whole lot there to it. Not no. a lot of there there. It's uh, it's very thin. Um, it is the only like real notes that I get are like a mild sweetness, a sort of caramel, um, and then alcohol. It. You're right on the nose. It it really does seem more like a um, vodka or neutral spirit than a whiskey, which honestly makes me wonder, for the price point, uh, that is a thing that they do in Japan, is um, certain uh, aged neutral spirits must legally be called whiskey um, because it's been aged, even though it's not technically whiskey. This is, this is without a doubt the beige of Japanese whiskeys. I, it's fine if you're trying to sell a house and coat your walls with it, but it's not really exciting. Yeah, I, I have nothing to say about it. I'm not, I'm not even let down or unimpressed. Is that everything? I mean, mm -hmm. it seemed like you said quite a bit more mm -hmm. than that. But I've literally never had so little to say about a whiskey before. Uh, I, I'm at a loss of words. I'm fully at a loss of words. Normally, we have so much to say about everything that we that we drink and talk and review like but there's just this is scotchka from the room do you when he like tries to make a mixed drink but tommy Wiseau doesn't know what drinks are so he mixes like uh, a fourth scotch and then three-fourths just straight vodka mm -hmm. that's what this is i'm pretty sure that's what that is mm -hmm. that's scotchka i'm tired i'm wasted i love you darling it's the lacroix of whiskey <laughs> 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 just it, like sat, yeah, know, a bottle of vodka that sat next to uh, a Miyagikyo for a little bit, just dreaming <laughs> down the hatch, I suppose. It's not that harsh. It's not that hard to drink. I don't know that I would want to. Closing thoughts. Um, shoot it if you have to. This is well, well whiskey. Uh, it's not terrible. It just doesn't. Have, there's not a lot to talk about. It is incredibly one or more accurately two notes uh thanks for watching uh i am charles and i'm dan uh check down there for links and stuff and uh i hope you like the cocktail that we're going to show you cheers guys
The concept is to make a whiskey drink that is more sippable, something that you can drink in the summer and have with a meal. Diluting the whiskey in seltzer water makes the difference. Start with a highball glass, or like I have here, a pint glass, and then remember the drinks generally have ice in them. Then you're going to want to take about two ounces, give or take, depending on your preference, of whiskey. You're either trying to accentuate the flavors of the whiskey so that you can spend more time with it, or dilute it to make it more palatable, which in the case of Tori's Classic is definitely the latter. Once you have that, the ratio is usually between one to three and one to four. It really is all about preference. I've had highballs a dozen different ways at a dozen different places, and while they're all generally just seltzer and whiskey, changing your whiskey and changing your ratios can make an absolute difference. As far as garnishes go, there's a lot of discussion about whether they should be included at all, and if they are, what kind. Here I'm just going to cut a little bit of lime. Despite being this simple, it's kind of considered an art, as with a lot of cocktails. Experiment, do what you think tastes right, and don't overthink it. This is supposed to be a light, pleasant, summery cocktail for a hot day that will go with a meal so that you're not just chugging whiskey along with your dinner. If I can make a recommendation, it definitely goes well with takoyaki. If you like this video, please subscribe and uh, follow us on social media. Uh, have a good one, and we'll see you in the next one.